Get ready to hear about a really sad story where someone's love for a game went very wrong. We're here on our channel to talk about something scary. The story of Daniel Petrick, a teen who did something awful because of a video game. Are you ready to learn about why this terrible thing happened? Get ready for a story that might upset you. In a quiet town called Wellington, Ohio, there lived a teenager named Daniel Petrick, also known as Danny. He was connected with Wellington even though he lived in Brighton Township, thanks to his father, Mark Petrick, who was a well-respected pastor at the New Life Assembly of God Church. Danny's life seemed really nice, with his mom, Susan Petrick, completing their happy family. His relationship with his parents was full of love and togetherness, which everyone around them could see. His dad said this and others who knew them agreed. Among his friends and relatives, he was like a symbol of normal teenage happiness. No one could see any signs of hidden problems that might lead to the terrible event that happened later. One of Danny's school friends talked about how nice and funny he was. He was friendly and made people laugh. At church, he really loved learning about the Bible, and this made the people there like him even more. He did fine in school, not the best but also not in trouble. The school leader said that Danny was completely different from the violence that was about to happen. But sometimes life can suddenly change. For Danny, it was a skiing accident that took him on an unexpected path. He got a bad infection after the accident and had to stay home for a year to get better. During this time, he found a new interest, video games. His friend Jonathan Johnson introduced him to the Halo series and he got really into it. He would spend seven to eight hours playing these games, getting lost in the action. Halo is a game with a lot of fighting against aliens, and it's meant for grown-ups. This became a problem because Danny's dad didn't like it at all. There was a big fight at home about these games, and it got so bad that his dad said he had to choose between the games and the house they lived in. Danny was caught in the middle of what he liked and what his dad wanted. Just a few days before the terrible thing happened, Daniel did something important. He bought a new game, Halo 3. He did this secretly because he knew his dad wouldn't like it. It was a way for him to feel like he had some control and freedom in his choices. He loved the Halo game so much that he wanted to own a part of the virtual world he enjoyed. But this secret journey into the world of video games clashed with his dad's beliefs. When his dad found the Halo 3 game at home, there was a big argument. This argument had consequences that no one could have imagined. His dad not only took the game away, but also locked it in a safe. Strangely, this safe wasn't just for games. It also held a real gun, a 9mm Taurus PT-92 handgun. It was like a mix of the game's battles and a real gun, which is pretty scary. On October 20, 2007, something really scary happened that changed lives forever. Just a few days after Daniel's dad took away the game and the gun, something terrible happened. Daniel got the key to the safe secretly and did something really bad. At 7 p.m. that day, he went to his parents and asked them to close their eyes for a surprise. But instead of a nice surprise, he shot them. Gunshots echoed in their home, breaking the calm. In their living room, something awful was happening. Daniel's dad got hurt and was bleeding a lot. His mom, Susan Petrich, got hurt too and she didn't survive. It was really sad. Daniel did something really strange after that. He put the gun in his dad's hand and told him to take it. Then, something even stranger happened. Daniel's sister Heidi and her husband, Andrew Archer, came into the room. They weren't supposed to be there for another two hours, but they came early. This twist of fate tied them to this terrible event forever. Before they could understand what was happening, Daniel told them to stop and made up a story about their parents fighting. But they didn't believe him and went inside anyway. What they saw was a nightmare. After this awful thing happened, the police came because Heidi called them. Meanwhile, Daniel tried to run away in the family van, trying to find comfort with a friend. But his escape didn't work out. Fate had a different plan. The road he drove on was heavy with the weight of what he did. The further he went, more he couldn't escape what he had done. Eventually, the police caught him. He was arrested, and the sadness of what happened echoed through the same van that took him away from his broken world. In the special place where they decide what's fair, Daniel's trial happened from December 15 to 17, 2008. This was at the Lorraine County Court of Common Pleas in Illyria, Ohio. 
The judge in charge was Judge James Burge. Daniel, the main person in this sad story, chose not to have a jury. Instead, he let the judge decide what would happen to him. In the big courtroom, about 25 young people came to support Daniel. They were there to show they cared about him, even though something really bad had happened. The trial looked at his family and friends to understand what led to this terrible event. People who knew Daniel and his family talked about their relationships and stories. His family talked about when he was a little kid. Jonathan Johnson, his friend who introduced him to the video games, also talked. Even his grandfather, who was older, said something to show how family can be complicated. In the serious courtroom, people showed their feelings. Daniel cried because of all the emotions and struggles he went through. But among all these feelings, someone unexpected stood up. It was Mark Petrick, Daniel's dad, who was also hurt by his own son. He showed understanding and support, even after everything that happened. It was really powerful to hear him talk. He said Daniel still didn't know why he did something so bad, and his words carried a lot of sadness and hope for understanding. In the courtroom that held the pine of the past and the chance for healing, Mark Petrix's words were like a heavy weight. He said he still does not understand why he did something so terrible. His voice was full of sadness, a dad's wish to make sense of something that's really hard to understand. In the courtroom, the person talking against Daniel, Anthony Silo, used his words to make people scared. He wanted to show that Daniel was really bad and didn't feel sorry for what he did. Silo said something really scary. He thought Daniel might have planned this terrible thing to happen, like a twisted way of ending his own life. He explained how Daniel planned everything very carefully and showed that his actions were thought out. But under all the things people talked about in the trial, it became clear that Daniel had planned everything very carefully. It was like he was getting ready for something really bad. He spent a week getting everything ready, like he knew what everyone's schedule was. He was waiting for his sister Heidi and her husband to come at 9 p.m., and he wanted to use that moment for his plan. But something unexpected happened, and they got there two hours earlier. This changed everything and stopped his plan from working. In this scary story, there's a report about Daniel's thoughts that helps us understand more. The report was ordered by the people who were trying to help Daniel. It tells us what was going on in his mind, and it's really unsettling. In the report, Daniel admitted that he had a really bad plan in his mind for a week. He wanted to hurt his parents, and this plan became real, shaking their community really hard. In the complicated courtroom, the defense had a different story to tell about Daniel Petrick than the prosecutor. They both wanted to show who Daniel really was. James Kersey, the defense lawyer, told a story that went deep into Daniel's mind. He didn't argue about the facts of the crime, but he painted a picture of Daniel struggling with his thoughts. The defense said that Daniel might not have been in the right state of mind because of something called video game addiction. Kersey talked about how Daniel got lost in video games and how it affected his thoughts. He said Daniel's life was tough after he got hurt, and he used video games to escape from the pain. Kersey explained that this mix of being young in pain and playing games made Daniel's mind weak, like he was easily influenced. Kersey's story made everyone wonder, did Daniel really understand how serious his actions were? He talked about how video games can change the way people think, making them see things differently. The question was, if someone who's used to restarting a game after making mistakes can truly understand that life doesn't work the same way. But Kersey's story wasn't just about games. He also talked about Daniel's life and the people who knew him. He showed that Daniel was a regular teenager, nothing extraordinary. It was interesting that Daniel had a video game with him when he ran away from the crime scene, showing how much games were a part of his life. Kersey made a big shift in the story, saying that Daniel didn't plan everything carefully. He said that Daniel's actions were more impulsive, like he didn't think before doing something bad. The defense didn't bring in experts to talk about this, leaving the jurors to think about video game addiction themselves. In the end, the trial decided that Daniel was guilty. He was convicted of serious charges like murder and trying to hurt someone. Because he was young, he didn't get the death penalty. He got a long time in prison with the possibility of getting out after 23 years. But the prosecutor wanted him to stay in prison forever. After the trio, people kept talking about it. The story went beyond the courtroom and made people think about video game addiction. 
Even the company that made the game Halo 3 said something about it. As Daniel's life continued in prison, his story reminded everyone about the risks when virtual worlds and real life mix together. Thank you for watching another amazing video from our true crime team. Like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned to our next real-time crime video.